bring it up, and then I can click link. Now, of course, dragging and dropping does make it a little bit quicker for you, uh, but just to understand the concept of what's happening in the background, uh, it's, it's now establishing a link between this contact and this organization, so that way you know exactly uh, who's related to what. And of course, the same concept of linking applies to tracking calls, um, to-dos, appointments, um, notes, all this stuff is, is tracked with the use of the link, and, and I'll be able to show you that as we go. So in addition to being able to link a contact to an organization, it's also important to be able to track relationships. And relationships exist between either two contacts or two organizations. So let's, uh, let's take a look at a relationship. So we're going to say that uh, Alfred and Ali, um, they're, they're colleagues. So by linking, by dragging and dropping uh, the two contacts together, I can now establish a link between the two. So I'm going to say, um, let's say, uh, let's change it up a little bit. Let's say it was referred by. Now, now you'll notice below that it actually tells you Alfred Newman was referred by Ali Dayon. Now, if that wasn't the case and it was the other way around, you could quickly swap it. And that way you can ensure that you have the correct relationship there. And, and of course, once again, this stuff is customizable within the preferences. So I'm going to click OK. And now when you're looking at Alfred, you'll notice that not only is he linked to this Alpine Ski Shop as a designer, but he also referred Ali Dayon. And when I look at Ali, you'll be able to see that he's the president of Sunshine Media, but he was referred by Alfred. So this way, not only are you keeping uh, the role that a contact have in an organization, but you can also keep the relationship that this contact might have with other contacts in your database. This is all just about building uh, a big picture of your, your data, really, so that way you have this information in front of you. Now, in more important, or sorry, not more important, sorry, uh, in addition to being able to, of course, uh, keep track of roles and relationships, it's also important being able to create lists based on the information you're looking for. So in Daylight, there's a couple ways of doing it. Um, you could create a, a basic list, um, and, and this is really just as simple as, as creating a list. Um, so let's say uh, friends, uh, and within this list, uh, you'd have to manually um, add or remove those contacts. So we can say Alex is a friend, maybe April's a friend. Uh, these contacts are always going to stay in this list until I remove them. Now, if you want to make sure that your lists are always up to date, this is really where smart lists can come into play. Now, a smart list is based on specific criteria. So as an example, I'm going uh, to close out of the smart list window, uh, and I'm going to open up one of the, the previous ones I've created. So as an example, by creating a smart list based on the category is client, and, and these are the different categories that I've set uh, for the database, once again, completely customizable within the preferences, I can now say, show me all the contacts that, that match this criteria. And, and to show you where you'd set this criteria, I'm just going to open up Frank, and you'll notice that there's a category field that says client. So what Daylight's doing is it's looking for all the contacts that have this field set as client. So this way I can see all my clients that are in my database. The same can be said for leads, suppliers. Uh, it really just depends on how you, you want to classify the contacts that you, you deal with. And then from there you can separate them into to these lists. Now what makes that smart list so uh, special is the fact it's dynamic. So as an example, uh, right now we have two suppliers in this database. Now if I was to take a look at one of my leads, and, and, and maybe uh, Sonia was actually a supplier. So right now Sonia is in my lead list, and I'm going to change her record to supplier. Now you'll notice when I click OK, Sonia comes out of my leads, and now she's going to appear in my supplier list because, of course, she matches that criteria. Now, this is just using one, um, one criteria as an example. If I wanted to show all the clients, uh, maybe based on a certain area. Now, in this case, I have addresses just at the top, but there's, there's quite a bit of different criteria that you can base these lists upon. Um, but I'm going to select address, and then I'm going to say city. So I want to see all my clients that's in Toronto. So I'm going to uh, switch from the is to contains, and I'm going to just type in TOR. Now what this is going to show me is, of course, all the clients that are in Toronto. So if I was to take a look at the business card, I'd see that, you know what, they have a Toronto address. And of course, if I look at Miriam, once again, it has a Toronto address. So if you wanted to, to focus... Um, on, on maybe a, a, mail, uh, a mailer or maybe um, if you wanted to, uh, to send out a, a message saying, hey, you know what, I got an event going on in your area, it'd be great to have you come out. This way you can simply pull these people from your database without having to go through each one and, and, and really finding it. 
So these are some really quick ways of, of being able to create lists, and, and more importantly, um, you can create more than this. So if you wanted to, to, to create a new smart list, it's just as simple as hitting a little plus sign, uh, just to show that again, uh, from the smart list. And then once you've done that, I'll just close the other one. Uh, it's just as simple as, as selecting your criteria. So if you, once again, if you wanted to base it on the category of your contacts, you could do so. Um, if you wanted to base it on uh, when they were created, um, maybe you wanted to simply base it on um, maybe a group that they belong to. Um, there's, there's tons of different criteria, but there's some great stuff that you can play around in there. Now, contacts, of course, are, are really the most common denominator to any business. Um, but it's also really important being able to ensure that you can manage your day and, and, and really everything that's going on. So let's take a quick look at the calendar. Now, when you first launch Daylight, chances are you're going to see something a little bit more similar to this. Uh, you'll be able to maybe see it in your day view, maybe your week view, maybe your month view. But this is going to show you all of the appointments that you have going on. Now, th that's great. But in addition to appointments, I got things on the go. I have projects I'm working on. And I might have opportunities. Maybe there's a chance to gain uh, new business. I want to be able to see all this stuff. So by toggling your do list, and, and it's just this little pin right here. I'm going to go through the, the actual uh, the menu for it, though. Um, so it would just be as simple as going view, calendar, show do list. And this is going to toggle the do list in the calendar. So this is now going to show me any tasks, any projects, or opportunities do within my calendar view. Uh, so just to expand on that, right now I'm seeing everything for the month. Whereas if I was to view a, a single day, I'm just going to see everything for that day. And of course, you can see my list of tasks uh, shrunk to one. Now, in addition, I also recommend showing details. Now, what this is going to do for you, as an example, if I wanted to see more information about upload content and photos, uh, I can get the details of it. If I wanted to see more information about uh, this dentist appointment, I, I can see all this stuff right within the detail pane. Now, I want to take a quick second to show you one of the neat ways of navigating through the program, because this is something that really applies to this view. So going back to the concept of, of viewing this task and, and seeing it and saying, you know what, do I really have enough information right now in terms of uploading content and photos? I don't really have enough information. Well, what is it for? Well, because I know it's linked to a project website design, I want to go to that project to view more information about it. Now, typically, if you were just to select a project or, or double click on a task or, or double click uh, uh, on any appointment in this detail field or contact, you're going to open up the actual record itself. So I'm just going to click on it. And you'll notice how I opened up a new project record. Um, I got the, the project name, I got the, the people linked to it, and I got the details associated with it. Well, that's fine and dandy, but it doesn't give me any information about it. So this is where that little trick comes into play. Now, if you hold down the Option key in Daylight, this will actually take you to the record. Now, before I do this, I'm going to explain what's going to happen. So when I hold down the Option key and click on Website Design, Daylight is going to switch to the project view highlighting this website design project. So I'm going to do it right now. I'm holding down the option key and I'm going to click. And you'll notice Daylight has switched to the project section viewing this website design project. Now at a glance I can see exactly where it is. So you know what this is a brand new project in the concept planning stage. Uh, and now I can see all the different tasks and appointments for this. And of course if I expand this open a little bit I can see that upload content and photos that's due today. So now this is showing me all the information relating to it. I can see who the client is, who the photographer is, uh, and, and more importantly, everything going on. So now I understand, oh, i got to upload the content and photos for this website design project for Perry uh, Cunham. Now I have that much more information at my fingertips. Now the other neat little thing I wanted to show you uh, is the shortcut bar. And you'll notice that I already have a few up there. I have my calendar, I have projects, I have contacts and organizations. What this allows you to do is, is take advantage of the command one, uh, and you can set up to nine shortcuts, so it's command one through nine. Um, but by using, say, command one, I can now jump to my calendar. So I'm just going to quickly do that to jump back. And now I'm viewing my calendar again. 
and all you have to do to create a shortcut is simply dragging uh, the source list and, and just to clarify the terminology source list uh, th those are all the different lists that would be in this pane regardless of the object so if I'm viewing contacts if I'm viewing organizations if I'm viewing projects these are all the different source lists so so say I always saw my my lead list say I, I checked it every single morning maybe multiple times a day I want to be able to easily jump to that by drag once again I'm just going to drag this so I'm, I just clicked and dragged and I'm going to drag the leads to that shortcut bar you'll notice a little plus signs added to my mouse so I'm going to add that to that now I got command 5 up there as well now so I'm just going to toggle through all of them just so you can see how easy it is to switch between the different views so I'm going to hit command 1 I'm going to switch to my calendar maybe I want to see all my projects I have going on now I hit command 2 I can jump to my project list uh, command 3 is going to jump to my contacts, command 4 is going to jump to my organizations, and then of course command 5 is going to jump to the leads, and that's the one I just created. So that's a really great way of jumping around um, in addition to of course using that option key. Uh, and just to expand on that, if I was viewing a contact and I wanted to find out more information about this organization, I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to double click on the organization. Now Daylight's taken me to the organization section, showing me the Alpine Ski Shop, and all the information relating to it. Now I, I know the jumping around can sometimes be tough to follow so I'm going to take this opportunity one more time just to, to do one more of those checks just to make sure everyone's still with me and, and kind of understands what they saw. Perfect, thank you John. Thank you, Matt. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, even if there is a, a couple of questions, I, I don't mind uh, answering those after. Uh, if I have an idea that a, a few of you are, are okay with the concepts, then uh, then I can get an idea that most of you are, are probably okay. Uh, but as always, if there is anything that you want me to go over, I'd be more than happy to, to do so. So uh, let's let's move past the calendar. Um, actually, well, before we do that, let's talk about uh, some of the other neat things that you can do within the calendar. Now. One of the most important things that uh, users want to be able to see, of course, uh, and, and more importantly in, in maybe a multi-user setup, is being able to see all your colleagues' schedules as well. Now, in Daylight, yeah, you do have users and resources, so you could simply um, view a, a colleague. Um, maybe you want to see a couple of them. You can simply uh, select a few of them. Uh, but if you want to see these people on a regular basis, maybe they're your A team, maybe they're your sales team, um, what have you. This way, with the use of a smart calendar, so you're going to create the same way you create one of those smart lists or a basic list, you're just going to hit the plus sign, and it's going to pull up a smart calendar window. So this is where you can, you can create a calendar view based on the kind of appointment. Uh, so to highlight the kind for you, I'm just going to create a new appointment, and it's the little icon just to the right of the name field. So this is where you can set the type of appointment. Um, so in this case, if you wanted to have an event, an outbound call, inbound call, chat, meeting, so forth, this is where you can set that. But more importantly, if you wanted to view that list, uh, or, or maybe you wanted to see all of your appointments that are inbound calls, maybe all your outbound calls, you can create those. If you wanted to base it on a certain category, um, maybe these are personal appointments, maybe these are research appointments, maybe these are sales appointments, uh, you could see that stuff. Um, but more importantly, you can also base it on those users. So if I wanted to see my calendar, uh, and then say uh, three others. We're going to say Aaron, we're going to say Allie, and we're going to say uh, Ryan. When I create this smart calendar, we're going to call this the A-Team. You'll now notice that I'm seeing, uh, in this case, the month view, but uh, I'm seeing everything that the A-Team has going on for the month, of course, color-coded uh, based on their user account. Uh, and these colors are something that you can set up within the, uh, the uh, user's uh, and, and team's preferences in Daylight. Um, it's just all done within the uh, uh, within that user's record, uh, but this way you can see everything that's going on uh, for multiple users as well. So let's talk about uh, logging a call or or to do, um, and of course setting up those reminders and things like that. So I'm going to take a quick second to touch base on those hotkeys that I mentioned. Um, so I'm going to go into the daylight preferences, and I'm going to go into the hotkeys. Now within hotkeys, you can set up two uh, 
shortcuts. And, and these shortcuts are system wide. And, and by system wide, I mean if you're in Safari, if you're in iTunes, maybe you're in the Mac App Store taking a look at some new apps. Um, these hotkeys will allow you to, to take advantage of, of two things in daylight. One is that find panel, uh, and that's the same window that I opened up from the toolbar. And the other is creating a new task. Um, so it's the same as if I was to click on this new task. But the idea is uh, if you were in a, another program or doing something else, you can quickly create a new task or pull up your find window. Well, this is where this really comes into play. So just to quickly show you how you would set that up, um, I, I have uh, a four key combination, 